Hello and welcome to Game On Episode 3. I'm Simon. Laurie will pop up in a bit and be hung over at a Pokemon tournament, which you can see the effects of later. But first, our top story. Within the last week, it was announced that Square Enix are creating a cloud-based gaming initiative technology space dewey what's it thingy called Shinra. Now Shinra is a funny joke because in Final Fantasy, which Square Enix make, it's the name of a sort of evil sort of corporation, blah blah blah, well done Square Enix, very funny, great. Square Enix can't wait for us all to have this because they think it will enhance our gaming experience to the point where we don't even need big expensive consoles and we'll be able to play in game worlds that are 17 times bigger than Skyrim. So what? I actually think game worlds are like penises because it's not the size that matters, it's the level of detail in the terrain and the maps. I think that's the pun I'm supposed to make there anyway. The way it will work is essentially that your game is loaded onto the cloud, not a thing, and it sends the data to what is basically a video player that you will see as you play, with what they call minimal lag, otherwise known as some lag. And it's at this point that cloud gaming for me starts to fall apart because it relies on the internet. In America alone, 40% of people do not have access to high speed internet. So how are they going to experience a world 17 times the size of Skyrim? Companies will essentially force us online and onto the cloud, will then be curtailed into financial transactions to keep access to content we already own. It's the same model that the big TV networks still use. Essentially denying access to content they think makes it inherently a premium, but that isn't how we consume media anymore. Here's a good example. American stand-up Louis C.K. produced, directed and edited his own stand-up special. He then sold it on his website for just $5, a price point high enough to make a profit, but low enough so that most people thought, f*** it, it's not even worth pirating. And overwhelmingly, people didn't. And in two weeks, he made a million dollars, or in Square Enix lag talk, a metric f ton of money. The problem is, a lot of these companies are run by people who only know people who also run companies. So they literally don't know what is happening in the world of most people. So when they say, oh, cloud gaming, we'll put it all on the cloud, it'll be brilliant. Most people will just look at the tariff for high speed internet and then just go read a book. I'm going to read For Crying Out Loud by Jeremy Clarkson because I've got a persecution complex. Right, it's uh, Saturday. I'm in South End at the Astro City Arcade for the Street Pass UK Autumn Event Pokemon Tournament. And it's kind of it's kind of a bit of a difficult one today because uh, number one, I don't really know anything about Pokemon, and number two, I went out last night and I don't feel great today. Just don't feel great. So, but anyway, professionalism. I'll barrel on regardless. So uh, let's go do some Pokemons. Oh God, I'm not ready for this. So it's safe to say that I didn't really know what to expect going into this tournament, aside from the possibility of, you know, maybe seeing my lunch again. When I arrived at Astro City, I was greeted by the sight of one man ninjaing his way through this rhythm game, which blew my beer-addled mind, so I kind of had to find something more my level. That's really beautiful. Soothed by the neon wonders of the slot machine, I stumbled my way towards the tournament and was greeted by an array of competitors in Ash Ketchum hats and supportive girlfriends going absolutely mad for it. I knew that to make sense of what was going on, I would need help. Fortunately, I had it. My brother, Jay. Hello. Jay, you like Pokemon. I do. Why am I here? Why did you bring me to this thing? Why? Well, um, one of my friends is playing in the tournament. And I thought I'd come down and support him. And who's doing this? Like, children? No, 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 no. it's not just children. It's, no. it's children, <laughs> adults. My friend is 23. Is he now? And whose basement does he live in? His mum's. Regardless of age though, everyone seemed to be having a great time battling, discussing tactics and combining bright yellow Pikmin hats with corn t-shirts. If you listen closely, you can hear Gok Wan being sick in his own mouth. As you can imagine, all this poker babble was getting a bit much, so I went off in search of something I could understand. That's how I feel today. 
With that proving to be an abject failure like much of my adult existence, I decided I'd see what this Pokemon lark was really about by challenging Jay to a battle. And I felt ready because I'd done my research. Well, I watched the cartoon. Okay, so let's see what you're using. Cool, here we go. Pikachu. Boom. <laughs> Pika. Uh, in the cartoon, he's really good and he kills everything. So whatever this hammerhead shark Kosaurus is um, gonna die. Hammerhead Sharkosaurus. That is literally the best thing that my mind could have come up with at that time. Useless. But it didn't kill my confidence. Prepare to die, God, chump. <laughs> oh. Sorry kids, but the cartoon's just finished now. Just, just killed the lead. Oh, I've got a secret weapon. And here okay. comes another Pikachu. Oh, Pika. Electric types, not so good against ground types. There you go. Never stopped him in the show, did it? Very true. He's dead. Right, yeah, well, I I won because you just, oh, you just quit the game, didn't you? Oh, I won. So I didn't really learn much from my time at the tournament, except that tequila doesn't really mix well with anything, especially life. But I did get to see loads of people enjoying a thing that they love, so that's something. Oh, and I also got a burrito on the way home, so yeah, wins all round.